In previous videos, I've introduced you to my favorite ear training method for audio engineers. If you haven't seen any of my other videos on ear training, here's the basic concept. You can learn to identify frequencies by associating a vowel sound to each octave frequency band. This video is all about how to improve your ability to EQ drums, vocals, and other instruments by harnessing the power of that simple technique. But if this is our first time meeting, my name is Kyle. Welcome to Audio University. If you want to get started right away, I put together a guide that gives you instructions on how to get started with a free online tool for practicing this method. You can find that guide at audiouniversityonline.com slash ear training guide. Now, I always demonstrate this technique using pink noise because that's the easiest way for beginners to hear the vowel sounds for the first time. But it's a little bit unrealistic. In a real world situation, you won't be mixing pink noise, you'll be mixing music, which is made up of many different instruments and can be a bit more difficult. Let's take a look at a few examples that are more realistic when it comes to mixing a song in the real world. We'll start by listening to drums. I'll play it again with no filter, and then I'll add the filter in. And I want you to listen for one of these vowel sounds when I do that. You may have heard an ah sound when I switched on the filter. Looking at the guide I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I can see that ah corresponds to one kilohertz. Okay, another example with drums. Try to hear the vowel sound that pops out when I engage the filter. Did you hear it that time? Here it is again. This time, four kilohertz was boosted, which corresponds to an E sound. Okay, one more example with drums, and then we'll move on to some other instruments. Again, listen to which vowel sound cuts through the mix when I engage the filter. This one's a bit more subtle, especially if you're not listening on a good pair of headphones or speakers. Listen particularly to the low mid frequency bands. This time it was an OO sound, or 250 hertz. Now, in these examples, we were able to listen to both the unfiltered version of the drums compared to the filtered version of the drums, which makes it easier to hear the change. In a real situation, you won't have that luxury. In a real mix, you'll need to rely on what you think sounds good and listen for which changes at which vowel sounds will help you get there. Let's listen to this acoustic guitar I just recorded in my office here. Now, this time, I just want you to listen to the recording as it is and make a subjective judgment on which vowel sound you would turn down in order to make the recording sound better. Everyone will have a different opinion here, so you're not right or wrong. But in my opinion, the guitar sounds a little bit boomy, which could be due to an excess of ooh, or 250 hertz. So let's try removing some 250 hertz to see how it sounds.
Of course, if it's possible, I'd recommend just moving the microphone until you find a placement that sounds good as is. But re-recording isn't always an option, and that's when a little bit of EQ can be helpful. In all of the examples up until this point, we've been mixing only a single instrument. And in a real situation, in a live performance, or a recording with multiple instruments, you'll need to listen to the mix as a whole. Sometimes soloing an instrument can sound terrible alone, but in the context of the larger mix, it fits right in. Let's do one more example to get a feel for making adjustments to a single instrument in the context of a whole mix. I want you to pay special attention to the vocal in this mix. What do you think could be better? I bet I know exactly what you're thinking. You gotta figure out that nobody, nobody cares. But what you don't realize is that you touch so many lives of people who want you to give life just one more chance. To me, it sounds like the vocal is getting buried beneath the acoustic guitar. Now there are endless ways you could address this problem. You could use compression, you could use EQ on the acoustic guitar to create space for the vocal. But for the purpose of this video, I want you to ask yourself, what additive EQ, what frequency bands would you boost in the vocal to make this mix sound better? I bet I know exactly what you're thinking. You gotta figure out that nobody, nobody cares. But what you don't realize is that you touch so many lives of people who want you to give life just one more chance. I think if we used an EQ to boost some of the higher frequencies in the vocal, we would get a closer sounding vocal. And it doesn't always have to be only a single vowel sound. This high shelf will boost everything above one kilohertz. That includes ah, a, e, and even some more sibilant sounds like s. I bet I know exactly what you're thinking. You gotta figure out that nobody, nobody cares. But what you don't realize is that you touch so many lives of people who want you to give life just one more chance. There might be a better way to accomplish this, but I think that the vocal sets better after making that simple change. Again, get started right away by downloading the guide, audiouniversityonline.com slash ear training guide. But in addition to practicing with the free tool you'll find in that guide, I think it's also very important to simply listen to music you're familiar with as often as you can. Listening to music that you think sounds good will help you establish a reference point in your mind between what sounds good and what doesn't. Over time, you'll start to automatically recognize when a frequency band is too prominent, too weak, or when it's masking another higher frequency band. All you've got to do is take it one step at a time and keep practicing. Now, I will never claim to be the best mixing engineer in the world. I will never claim to be the best mixing engineer in the room. But what I know is that when you practice, you get better. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and share it with somebody else who you think would find it interesting. I'll see you in the next video.